We're backpacking there. Yeah. Get into the backpacking vibe. Vibe? Come to Byron Bay. Oh, it is awesome. Well, be careful. Muff before mates is actually a crime in Australia. Hi, guys. Thanks for talking to me today. That's all right. Awesome. So, coming off the huge success of the first film, what were the feelings going into The Inbetweeners 2? Had it not been for the fact that after, you know, two and a half, three years, that people were still saying to us, please do another film, fans saying, when are you going to do another film? We want to see another film. If it hadn't been for that, if we just had a good idea and the fact that we missed each other and that we loved doing it, um, that probably wouldn't have been enough to make us do another film because we would have gone, well, people probably don't want us to do another one. Um, but our fans did, and if it, if it wasn't for them, we, we, we definitely wouldn't have done this. We, it just wouldn't have happened. And, and thanks to them, because this is the most fun that we've had yeah. filming the in us. And how was it on set together? Do you guys, on your days off, do you still stick together, or are you sick of each other by... We don't have yeah. other friends outside this group. I mean, this is, this is literally it. I think we're sort of addicted to each other. <laughs> oh, I think, um, yeah, like we hate going back. All right. days off from filming, we were just like the in-betweeners. Like, yeah. We had one day off when we, <laughs> we went to the We went for breakfast. We went for breakfast. We went to the pancake for place for breakfast. So we played mini golf. We had a little fight. <laughs> <laughs> no, that was quite funny. <laughs> Simon had really quite an aggressive fight on the mini golf course. They were accusing each other of cheating. <laughs> and then um, we went to the arcades and played some games. We went to the cinema. <laughs> yeah, and then we went to the cinema. And then we went for dinner and then we went to bed. Well, no, we were, after we went to the Not cinema, together, after we come out of the cinema, the, the sort of mall that the cinema was in had shut and we'd got a bit confused and we didn't know how to get yeah, out of the mall. We stuck in the mall, we tried And then to I, was, I was getting worried because I really needed a poo. <laughs> 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 it was just, it was just... We tried oh to go God. out the back exit well, of the cinema. We went out of the car. We went out of the car. We ended up on a roof. Yeah, yeah. I know. We ended up on a roof. Yeah, I know. We ended up on a roof. 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 We were being naughty because we went out of these fire escapes and stuff. This does sound like the epic plot of The Inbetween Us 3. It was, it was. <laughs> so I have to admit that when the series first came out, I was 17 and in sick form and was like, yes, this is exactly how I am. And now oh, looking okay. back on that, I'm like, wow, what an idiot. <laughs> um, so how do you sort of interplay that, keeping with the original relatability that we all had with all your original fans to the idea of bigger and better? Even though some of the scenes and the things that these characters do can sometimes feel quite heightened the actual kind of big idea behind each of the films have been exactly what those exactly people right. would do at that point in time you know when you're 18 you go on a lad's holiday and then you know if you're thinking about going to uni you may do a gap year before and so whatever these characters have done it's always been completely rooted in reality so yeah. even though it is bigger and better and this film especially feels very epic it's also incredibly believable and they're in a new context now and you know in australia and having new experiences that we haven't seen from the in-betweeners before. But I do, I do think it is, like you say, something that a lot of teenagers go through at that time of their life. And I th think uh, we're pretty confident it retains that relatability. So I think you've all sort of maybe agreed upon, we're not seeing an in-betweeners three. So in that instance, yeah. what is it that you want audiences to sort of take away from the not necessarily just this film, but what's the lineage you want to leave? We don't really think about that, to be honest. It's just funny. All, 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 just want um, to make people our laugh. priority <laughs> at all times is to make it as funny as possible. We're trying to make the funniest film that we can. So if people come out of it and they've laughed a lot, that is yeah. that's all. We I think you only have a shot at a lineage if people watch it to begin with, and if it's not funny, they won't. So I suppose we are. We're just trying to get that first bit right. And that's just what we want to do. We just want to make people laugh. Sorry, sorry. <laughs> Simon, swear on your hoodie you're not going to cheat on me. I just love you so much. Basically, I just need to kill myself. And it's got to be easier than breaking up with her.